let us start uh, this video this is our video number two with question number three and four on the topic light IGCSE pass paper questions so let us start with question number three you may pause the screen solve the question come back to verify you're working so here it is let us understand what is happening in the question the refractive index n of glass in the air is given to you the refractive index of the glass is given to you state the equation that relates the speed of the light in the air va with the speed of the light in the glass in the glass vg and n so this comes from your definition of definition of refractive index which says refractive index of any substance is the speed of the light in air over the speed of the light in that substance all right the speed of the light in now the next question the speed of the light in the air is given to you calculate the speed of the light in the glass you use the same formula and put the values and you find the missing variable so what is the refractive index we are using the same formula n is 1.5 what is the velocity of the light in the air? 3 times 10 to the power 8 over the velocity of the light in glass. Solve this equation. You should be getting your answer which should be 2 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. So let us tally both the answers from the mark scheme. I keep showing the mark scheme time and again so that you understand how the mark scheme, the working, the marking for the for a question works. So the first one is correct. The second one is also correct. Do not forget to give the unit. It's always a good practice, good habit to write the units along with your answer. A light travels. Now I'm on the B part. The light travels in glass strikes the edge of the glass. The figure shows a ray of light at an angle of 41 degrees to the normal. The angle of incidence is given to you. The light passes from the glass into the air. Calculate the angle that the ray makes with the normal in the air. So they are talking about the refracted angle. So what is happening here? Let us understand. The light will emerge out. Something like this why why is the light bending away from the normal here because the light is coming from a denser medium into a rarer medium whenever the light travels this way from a denser to the rarer medium it bends away from the normal now they are saying calculate the angle that the ray makes with the normal in the air so let us solve this question how do we solve this question? Which formula would we use? So which formula do you think makes sense here? Which is the formula that connects I and R? I and R. It is the law of refraction which says sine of the incident angle over the sine of the refracted angle is equal to the speed of the light of the incident ray the speed of the light of the refracted ray right so sine i over sine r is the ratio of speed of incident ray over the speed of refracted ray so what is sine i i is i is given to you this is your i i is equal to 41 degrees so let us substitute the values in the equation sine of 41 over sine of r what is the speed of the incident ray where is the incident ray this is your incident ray and this is your refracted ray please do understand the incidence is happening from the glass the light is traveling in the glass and then coming out in the air so what is the speed of the incident ray it is the speed of the ray in the glass which is 2 times 10 to the power 8 the speed of the incident ray is 
2 times 10 to the power 8. What is the speed of the refracted ray? The refracted ray is in the air. So it is the speed of the light in air. 3 times 10 to the power 8. Strike these things out. So R would be equal to sine R would be equal to sine 41 times 3 over 2. When you solve this, you should get the value of angle of refraction. Let us check with the mark scheme if our working is going all correct so far. Yes. If you see 1.5 times sine 41. Why? Because this whole thing changes into 3 by 2 is 1.5 times sine 41. Now the next part of the question, state what happens to the light that strikes the edge of the glass at an angle to the normal much greater than 41. So the angle to the normal becomes very large. That means the angle of incidence becomes very large. Ultimately what happens? Total internal reflection will happen. Why? The light is traveling from a denser to a rarer medium. And if the angle of incidence is very high, the total internal reflection takes place. So total internal reflection. All right. So let us look at the mark scheme as well. Yes, all are working is correct. A and B part, we have solved the A and B part of this question. Let us now move on to the next question. So if you want, you can pause the screen, solve the question and come back to tally your answers. A class converging lens is used as a magnifying glass to observe a red ant. So you are using a magnifying glass here. The lens is used as a magnifying glass. The figure shows the lens, the principal axis and the two focus F1 and F2. Now the question number one, on this figure, mark a point on the principal axis labeled A to indicate a suitable position of the ant. So if you can go through the theory of the magnifying glass, you'll understand if you want to use a lens as a magnifying glass, the object should be between the focus and the lens. So you can place the ant anywhere between the focus and the lens. Anywhere in this space which I am showing with my pointer is the correct position of the ant because you are using the lens as a magnifying glass. First part is done. Second part. On this figure, mark a point on the principal axis labeled E to indicate a suitable position of the observer's eye. I, which side should the eye be? I should be on the other side of the lens. So you can put I anywhere on the other side of the lens. Mark a point IE, which is E, uh, anywhere on the other side. Next question. Tick one of the boxes to indicate where on the principal axis the image of the ant is located. So where the image of the ant will be located. Whenever you are using a lens as a magnifying glass, go through my theory on magnifying glass to understand it will be to the left of F1. I am not going to explain it here. If you want to understand it properly, go through the theory automatically you will understand the answer is the first one. Now we are on the third part of A which says underline two words in the list that describe the image produced by the magnifying glass. This is also done on the theory of magnifying glass. Obviously because it is a magnifying glass the image has to be magnified but magnified is not the option. So diminished is not an option. Image would be virtual and upright. Go through my theory. I am saying it again and again. Right? Because going through the theory here for this small question doesn't make sense. Go through the theory video on magnifying glass to understand it very well. 
Now on the B part, a red light from the ant passes into the lens. As the light enters the lens state, what happens to its wavelength? What happens to the wavelength? As the light enters the lens. The answer comes from your wave equation. This question relates to the topic waves. Right, go through the theory video in the chapter waves on refraction to understand how this question is answered. This question is answered with the help of the wave equation which is V is equal to F lambda. Speed is frequency times lambda. The frequency is a factor which does not change, which does not change. When the light enters a high density medium which is lens, the speed goes down. High density, so the speed is going down. Automatically it means that the wavelength is going down. So your answer should be it decreases. This equation ha has to hold true all the time, the wave equation. If the speed goes down, the factor on the right hand side that can go down is the wavelength because frequency never changes. So what happens to the frequency? Always remember nothing happens, no change. This is your A, no change. All right. Now the last question, state how the wavelength of the violet light in air differs from the wavelength of the red light in the air. So this is a basic general knowledge question that you should understand from the theory of theory of electromagnetic waves that the wavelength of the violet light is lesser than the wavelength of the red light. So let me show you the mark scheme so that you understand how the marking for this is done. Here it is. Tally your answers. In the next video, we'll be taking up question number 5 and 6.